dear students now we are going to discuss the characteristics of te and tm waves in parallel planes the important characteristics of the electromagnetic waves are propagation constant gamma which consists of the attenuation constant and phase shift constant cut off frequency the cut off wavelength and guided wavelength velocity of propagation and wave impedance so these are the important characteristics to analyze the electromagnetic wave propagation in the parallel planes so let's start with the propagation constant which is very important characteristics so based on this propagation constant we can find out the other parameters so we have already derived the field components for the transverse electric and transverse magnetic waves between parallel planes in that analysis we have assumed h squared is equal to gamma squared plus omega squared mu epsilon so from this we can find out gamma squared is equal to h squared minus omega squared mu epsilon then we can take square root on both the sides so here we can get the propagation constant gamma is equal to square root of h squared minus omega squared mu epsilon so here h value is nothing but m pi by a so m value varies from 0 to infinite okay so this is the first equation this is the general expression for the propagation constant of te and tm waves in parallel planes but in general the propagation constant can also be defined as alpha plus j beta so alpha is the attenuation constant beta is the phase shift constant so when the wave is propagating we can assume the attenuation constant value is zero that means there is no loss attenuation represents what loss okay so here during the wave propagation there is no attenuation so when the wave is propagating the phase of the wave is continuously changing in the direction of propagation so here the phase shift constant is not equal to zero do you all understand this concept so now we can compare this to parameter so this is the gamma expression for the wave propagation in between parallel planes and general expression is alpha plus j beta so if alpha is equal to 0 we can consider this j beta is equal to this one from this we can find out the value of this beta okay next we are going to find out the phase shift constant so during the wave propagation alpha is equal to 0 then gamma is equal to j beta so from first equation we can write gamma is equal to j beta which is also equal to the first equation square root of m by by a the whole square minus omega square mu epsilon so here we can have the j term j means it represents the imaginary term then we can take this minus as a common from the square root we can take square root of minus 1 then this term becomes plus and this term becomes minus so we can get square root of minus 1 and then square root of omega square mu epsilon minus m by by a the whole square square root of minus 1 is nothing but the imaginary value j then we can simplify this one to get the propagation constant beta is equal to square root of omega square mu epsilon minus m by by a the whole square so this is the second equation so which represents the phase shift constant so at the same time at high frequency range high frequency means this term is far greater than the second one so if it is far greater than this term we can simply neglect this one we can write beta is equal to square root of omega square mu epsilon alone then we can take this omega outside we can get the phase shift constant beta is equal to omega into square root of mu epsilon so this is the 
phase shift constant at very high frequency range. Okay. So next we are going to find out the cutoff frequency. So cutoff frequency means we can consider the frequency range. It is the frequency at which the wave motion ceases. That means if the frequency, operating frequency is less than this cutoff frequency. This is the particular frequency range. Okay. The frequency below which this cutoff frequency range, there is no wave propagation. But the frequency above which this cutoff frequency, there is a wave propagation. So this is the critical frequency and very important one to start the wave propagation in the particular direction. So it is the frequency at which the wave motion ceases. That means at cutoff frequency, the gamma value is equal to 0. Okay. So here we can say it is the frequency below which there is no wave propagation, above which the wave propagation occurs. Okay. Now we are going to find out the cutoff frequency from the first equation. So here at cutoff frequency f is equal to fc, gamma is equal to beta is equal to 0. Okay, that means from the second equation we can write beta is equal to square root of omega square mu epsilon minus m by by a the whole square. But at cutoff frequency we can represent this omega as omega c. Here c represents the cutoff value. Okay, so we can write beta is equal to square root of omega c squared mu epsilon minus m by by a the whole square is equal to 0. Then we can equate these two terms here. Then we can move this mu by epsilon this side as a denominator. We can get omega c squared is equal to 1 by mu epsilon m by by a the whole square. Then we can take square root on both the sides. Then omega c is equal to 1 by square root of mu epsilon square root of this square value is m by by a. Okay. So this omega c can also be represented as 2 pi fc. So from this we can find out the cutoff frequency fc is equal to 1 by 2 pi. We can move this 2 pi to this side as denominator. So 1 by 2 pi square root of mu epsilon m by by a. So here we can simplify this term and 1 by square root of mu epsilon can also be represented as the velocity of propagation. Then the cutoff frequency can be obtained as m by 2a square root of mu epsilon or m into v by 2a in terms of hertz. Consider this is the third equation. So this is very very important formula to find out the cutoff frequency for te and tm waves in parallel planes. So we can use this formula to find out the cutoff frequency and we can solve some problems. Okay. So if the operating frequency is less than the cutoff frequency, then we can find out the propagation constant from the formula omega c square root of mu epsilon into square root of 1 minus f by fc the whole square. This is an another formula to find out the propagation constant if frequency is less than cutoff frequency. Okay. So next we are going to find out the cutoff wavelength. So wavelength means is the distance traveled by the wave with a phase shift of 2 pi radians. So at cutoff frequency, the wavelength can be represented as cutoff wavelength. So as we know that lambda is equal to what? C by F. C is the velocity of light. So here we can consider the velocity of propagation by the cutoff frequency. So lambda is equal to V by Fc. Here Fc value is what? From the third equation, V by M into V by 2A. Then we can get the value of this lambda c as 2a by m. So this is an another important formula to find out the cutoff wavelength for T and Tm waves. So we can use this formula as well as this formula to find out the cutoff values. Okay. So next one is guided wavelength lambda g. So it is the distance traveled by the wave with a phase shift of 2 pi radians at the same time guided in the direction of propagation between the parallel planes 
so here it can be obtained from the formula 2 pi pi beta so here we can substitute the formula of beta that is square root of omega square mu epsilon minus m by by a the whole square correct so from the second equation we can substitute the beta value here so this is the formula for lambda g at the same time at high frequency range we can use the formula omega into square root of mu epsilon correct so at high frequency that means if the operating frequency is far greater than the cutoff frequency we can use this formula instead of this one so we can write lambda g is equal to 2 pi pi beta is equal to 2 pi pi omega into square root of mu epsilon so what is omega omega is nothing but 2 pi f then we can simplify this term we can get 1 by f into square root of mu epsilon as i told you velocity of propagation is equal to 1 by square root of mu epsilon so we can write the lambda g as v by f okay next the relation between this guided wavelength and cutoff wavelength so here we can get the relation as 1 by lambda squared is equal to 1 by lambda c squared plus 1 by lambda g squared so here lambda c value is what cutoff wavelength value is 2a by m correct or we can represent it as v by fc okay then we can get the 1 by lambda squared is equal to 1 by lambda c squared plus 1 by lambda g squared here lambda is nothing but the free space wavelength okay so the next one is velocity of propagation so it is defined as the ratio of angular frequency to the phase shift constant at high frequency range it can be obtained as 1 by square root of mu epsilon so this is the standard formula for velocity of propagation okay when the wave is propagating in the guiding structure there are two types of velocities possible one is phase velocity the next one is group velocity so phase velocity means it is the rate at which the wave changes its phase. So here we can represent the phase velocity as velocity of propagation by square root of 1 minus fc by f the whole square. So here the phase velocity and group velocity both depends on the cutoff frequency range. Okay. Then the group velocity it is represented as vg. So here it represents the velocity with which the energy propagates along a guide. So how much energy is propagating along a guide with respect to the phase shift that is known as group velocity. So here Vg is equal to d omega by d beta. Okay so we are going to differentiate the operating frequency with respect to the phase shift constant then we can get the group velocity is equal to the velocity of propagation into square root of 1 minus fc by f the whole square. Here this velocity of propagation is equal to what? 1 by square root of mu into epsilon. So in case of air or free space. So where this mu r is equal to epsilon r is equal to 1. We can get v is equal to 1 by square root of mu naught into epsilon naught. That is nothing but. 3 into 10 to the power 8 that means velocity of light so in free space condition this v is nothing but the velocity of light okay so next the relation between the phase velocity and group velocity that is the velocity of propagation is equal to square root of the phase velocity and group velocity finally we are going to find out the wave impedance Wave impedance is also known as characteristics impedance. It is defined as the ratio of the electric field to the magnetic field. So we can take EX to the HY as plus. In terms of the reverse direction, we can take minus EY by HX. Okay. So here we can consider the wave is traveling in the Z direction. Then we can take the ratio of this EX to HY or EY to hx okay so for tm wave the wave impedance can be obtained as eta into square root of 1 minus fc by f the whole square 
here this eta is nothing but the intrinsic impedance of the wave okay that is equal to square root of mu by epsilon so this one is wave impedance this one is intrinsic impedance for te waves it can be obtained as eta by square root of 1 minus fc by f the whole square so this two are the important formula to find out the wave impedance for te waves and tm waves in parallel planes so if you want to relate this to we can take the multiplication of this two we can get the value as eta square then we can get eta is equal to square root of wave impedance of te and wave impedance of tm so this is the relation between these two okay